All right, in this video, we're going to do an example of solving a trig equation with a coefficient in the argument. And all that means is, uh, basically, inside the parentheses, in front of the variable, uh, notice we have different coefficients, not just, uh, you know, not just a single theta or just a single x. And uh, you have to be a little careful on these. Uh, we're going to find solutions that fall in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Um, but we'll talk about that here in a second. So the first thing, uh, we've got cosine squared of 2 theta equals 1 fourth. I'm going to rewrite that as cosine of 2 theta all being squared equals 1 fourth. Well, to get rid of the square, I'm going to square root both sides. And recall, when you take a square root, you've got to stick a positive and a negative on one side or the other. So uh, on the left side, we'll be left with cosine of 2 theta equals positive negative well, uh, if you take the square root of 1, we get 1. If we take the square root of 4, we simply get 2. So I'm trying to figure out where cosine of 2 theta equals positive or negative 1 half. Uh, what I usually do on these is I make a little substitution. Okay, um, I'm going to let, say, uh, we'll call it y. Let's let y equal 2 theta. So really now I'm trying to solve, well, cosine of y equals positive and negative one half. Okay, so why did I do that? Well, the idea is really sort of your interval has changed because originally we wanted theta to be in the interval zero to two pi. Okay, that was the original requirement. We said we want theta to be in zero to two pi. Well, that means that two theta would have to be in, well, if you double this, uh, two theta would be in the interval zero to four pi. But 2 theta, we said that's the same thing as y. So really what we're doing is we're finding all solutions to cosine y equals positive 1 half or negative 1 half. Now in the interval 0 to 4 pi. Once we get these solutions, we're, we'll sort of backtrack to get back to our solutions for theta. Okay, so that means we have to figure out where cosine y equals either positive 1 half or cosine y equals negative one half. Well, cosine of y equals uh, positive one half at the angle. Let's see. Uh, I think pi over three would be uh, a place where that would happen. Also, at five pi over three would be another place where that happens. Uh, but that would just be if we sort of make uh, if we just think about the interval zero to two pi. We've sort of only went around the unit circle once. Well, since it's 0 to 4 pi, we can make two trips around the circle. So what I can do to each one of these is I could simply add 2 pi to get another solution. So pi over 3 plus 2 pi would be another solution. 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi would also be another solution. And if we get common denominators, uh, clean this up a little bit, uh, I could multiply top and bottom by 3. That would give 6 pi over 3 plus 1 pi. We would get 7 pi over 3. And for our other one, if we multiply top and bottom by 3 to get common denominators, we would get 6 pi over 3 plus 5 pi. That would give us 11 pi over 3. Okay, so we're not done yet, but we've kind of got uh, four solutions that we're going to use uh, to help us get uh, the solutions to the original equation. Well, also we have to figure out where cosine y equals negative one half. Well, that's going to happen uh, at the angle. Let's see. So pi over three is one of our solutions. That would happen at two pi over three. Cosine of two pi over three would be negative one half. Um, also, cosine of four pi over three would equal negative one half. But now we can do the same thing. We can add two pi to each of these. So I'm going to add 2 pi to each of these. And again, if we get common denominators, you could multiply top and bottom by 3. That would give 6 pi over 3. So we would get 8 pi over 3. And uh, likewise, if we add 6 pi uh, over 3 to 4 pi over 3, we'll get 10 pi over 3. Okay, so now we've got these four solutions, these extra four solutions. So. Uh, again, you know, we want theta to be in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Definitely all of these answers are not in 0 to 2 pi, they're in 0 to 4 pi. 
But now I'm just going to kind of go back. Um, so we said y, again, that was the same thing as our 2 theta. So y is the same thing as 2 theta. Uh, but we said solutions for y. We said y can either equal all of these numbers. It can equal pi over 3. Uh, y could equal 5 pi over 3. So equivalently, 2 pi could equal 5 pi over 3. Likewise, if 2 theta equals 7 pi over 3, that'll be another solution. If we can let 2 theta equal 11 pi over 3, that'll be another solution. We've got a lot of solutions here. If 2 theta equals 2 pi over 3, if we can uh, figure out where 2 theta equals 4 pi over 3. So I'm just taking 2, pi, or 2 theta and setting it equal to all of these values. So we'll get 2 theta equals 8 pi over 3. Last but not least, we'll get 2 theta equals 10 pi over 3. Okay, so now we've got a whole bunch of solutions. And what we're going to do now, again, we're trying to solve for theta. I'm just going to multiply uh, each side by uh, 1 half. So if we multiply, um, say, the, left, or the first uh, both sides by 1 half, we'll simply be left with theta on the left. And if we multiply by 1 half, uh, we'll get pi over 3 times 1 half, which is going to give us pi over 6. That's going to be one of our solutions. And now I just have to do this for just simply uh, every value. So if we multiply by 1 half, we'll get 5 pi over 6. Um, if we multiply by 1 half, again, we'll get theta equals 7 pi over 6. If we multiply by 1 half, uh, we'll get 11 pi over 6. If we multiply by uh, 1 half, we would get 2 pi over 6, or we can just reduce that to pi over 3. Um, if we multiply 4 pi over 3 by 1 half, uh, we would get 4 pi over 6, or uh, equivalently, that would reduce to just simply 2 pi over 3. Um, let's see, getting a little closer. Um, 8 pi over 3, if we multiply both sides by 1 half, we'll get 8 pi over 6, again, which would simply reduce to 4 pi over 3. Last but not least, we're having fun. Uh, multiply both sides by 1 half, and we'll get 5 pi over 3 after simplifying. So notice all of these solutions. Uh, notice all of these solutions for theta they all do fall in the interval 0 to 2 pi, uh, just like we wanted. So again, typically what I do in, this, in these types of problems, just try to, uh, you know, uh, eventually get it down to just cosine or sine, or whatever your trig function is. I replace, again, you know, if there's 2 theta, 3 theta, 80, 80 theta, I would replace it. And I have to make sort of the uh, corresponding uh, adjustment to the interval, because now I've got to find uh, sort of solutions in a different interval. I think about solutions in that new interval, so that's what we were doing here at the very beginning, thinking about those solutions in that interval 0 to 4 pi. But then I just go back and, you know, sort of resubstitute back in that y was equal to 2 theta, set that equal to all the solutions I found, and then simply solve for theta, in this case by dividing by 2.